This is a guided reading of what is a vortex from the Weather and Climate Systems Unit. What happened when you used the vortex model in this lesson? You swirled water inside a bottle, letting gravity pull the water through the bottleneck. At the same time, air in the bottom bottle moved up through the center of the swirling water. This kind of circulation is called a vortex. A vortex is a circulation of water, and we'll learn more about it in the next paragraph. Vortices, the plural of vortex, often form in nature. Swirling leaves, water spouts, dust devils, such as the one shown at the right, and tornadoes are all examples of vortices. A vortex can also form in a hurricane that covers a very large geographic area. The eye, or calm region, at the center of a hurricane is an example of the center of a large vortex. This paragraph is explaining that vortices happen in nature, such as the swirling of leaves, water spouts, dust devils, tornadoes, and hurricanes. It's also sharing that the eye of a hurricane, or in a vortex, is calm, the winds are very low, and it doesn't appear as there is a storm at all, not until you hit the eye wall of the hurricane. What causes vortices to form in the atmosphere? The uneven heating of Earth's surfaces, the force of gravity, and Earth's rotation all influence air's motion and can force masses of air to rotate. This paragraph is telling us how vortices form, and they form through the uneven heating of Earth's surfaces, and that the air rises um, due to these differences. Uh, gravity pulls that air back down, and the Earth's rotation causes it to spin. The rotation of Earth is one of the factors responsible for the formation of hurricanes. You can see how by trying a demonstration with a partner. As the illustrations below show, first lay a piece of paper on a table. Hold a pen in the center of the paper. Slowly move the pen's tip towards the edge of the paper and draw a straight line. Now have your partner rotate the paper counterclockwise, mimicking Earth's rotation as you try to draw a line from the center of the paper to its edge. You'll find that the line curves to the right. This is the Coriolis effect in action. The main idea of this paragraph is to introduce to you the Coriolis effect. Air moves in a straight line, however, due to the motion of the Earth, the rotation of the Earth, this wind will actually curve. This you can see down at the paper, um, and um, we will do this demonstration or try to do this demonstration in class. If not, you can do it with a friend during resource. Likewise, as air travels across Earth, Earth's rotation may curve its path. Air is deflected to the right in the northern hemisphere and to the left in the southern hemisphere. This explains why large vortices, such as hurricanes, also called cyclones and typhoons, rotate counterclockwise in the northern hemisphere and clockwise in the southern hemisphere. This paragraph is trying to tell us that there are actually three different names for um, the, this phenomenon of um, of, uh, of hurricanes. So hurricanes can also be called cyclones. They can also be t called typhoons. It just depends on the area of which you're calling this. This last piece of information is trying to tell you that in the northern hemisphere, um, um, air is going to travel counterclockwise, and in the southern hemisphere, air is going to travel clockwise. On the back of your guided reading, draw a vortex of a tornado and hurricane using page 86 in the, as, in the textbook as an example. Make sure you label the eye, the eye wall. This ends recorded reading of hurricane formation. Have a great day.